And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today, folks, we're taking a look at the newest expansion for Ascension, Ascension Immortal Heroes. Now, this is an expansion that is either a standalone two-player game or it can, can be combined with Ascension Storm of Souls for an uh, expanded game that can go up to six players. As far as I know, you can combine it with any of the Ascension sets because, well, I have, but I have put all my Ascension sets together, which does dilute the way the game is played. But anyway, you're not here to hear about that. Let's take a look at this expansion. Because you can play this as a two-player game, the game comes with the cultists that you're always beating up and a couple more fanatics and your mystics and your heavy infantry and enough gems. You can play this as a two-player game or combine it to make it bigger. But you're not here to hear about old stuff. So let's take a look at some of the new cards. There's lots of new cards that are included with this game and there's all sorts of I, I guess variations on the same thing. I'm not saying that these cards are, are boring or bad or anything, but they're just a little bit uh, different than what you've seen before, okay? However, there are some cards that are very different. First of all, there's some more events. These events were introduced in the last expansion, and now there's more of them that are included. And one of the things that this expansion has, which I think is interesting, is a whole deck of these new event cards. Basically, you can shuffle these into your deck, and whenever one of these is pulled, then you'll pull the next event. This is a great way to put events into bigger decks, especially if you're using the older expansions, because it will bring up the events more often. Or if you want to use very specific events, you can have those events come when one of these new events shows up. There are a couple more cards also that deal with events, and I, and I very much enjoy having those in the game. But let's take a look now at some of the cards that caught my eye. First, we have the Gromites. This is a monster. I, I think this one's really cool. They're, they're very easy to kill, and they're, they're worth two points, but they're ongoing trophy. When you defeat another Gromite, you get two, two points. So if you can kill, like, three of these, you're doing very well and there's five of them included with the game, so that's pretty neat. Then we have the Beast Staff. I like this one. This is once per turn. Uh, it's a construct that gives you fighting once per turn, but you can also pay to show the top card of your deck, and you will gain points equal to the points value of that card. This is a great construct, one of my favorite constructs, because you often have that one left over to spend, and so here's a great way to spend it, and you're likely going to get points out of it, especially if you culled your deck. Another lifebound construct, here you can pay five to get life, and when you play a lifebound hero, you get uh, an extra one to spend. Here's the Wandering Ascara. They, you draw a card, banish a card, big deal. But if you play another one of these, you can banish both of them to take another turn. So there are several of these in the deck. So if you get them, you can banish both of them. That's two points for another turn. It can come in pretty handy at the right point in time. Uh, here's Aaron the God Slayer. He just kills a monster, period without paying its cost. Very powerful, very cool. Then we have a monster here, I came the genie, when you can put three wish tokens on him, and then you can remove one of these for plus two money or plus two fighting. Saber the Moonlit. This is one of my favorite cards ever. It gives you one, one, and one, and a card. Everything. And then if it's Unite, uh, United, you can you gain another one of everything, and that's one thing I, I like to point out about this one. There's a lot of more of the lifebound heroes that have unite on them. In fact, I've had some pretty good games now where I kind of focus just on the lifebound, um, and for some great things. And then we have oh, what is this? Another event? That's because this event here says, and for the trophy, discard a card. If you do gain a soul gem. Soul gem, that's the focus of this set, and it's not the only card. There are lots of cards. You can banish this for another, or another card if you do, gain a soul gem. Here's the one with a unite power to gain a soul gem. Here's a card, all you do is gain a soul gem. The nothing man, you can banish him to gain a soul gem. Destroy a contract, to gain a soul gem. The next time you beat a monster, gain a soul gem. Gain a soul gem and draw a card. 
this construct. Every time you play another me mechanic construct, you get a soul gem. This awesome monster, every turn you get a soul gem. Uh, so you have a lot of these soul gems. What is that? Well, there's a whole new deck here in the game called, surprisingly enough, Soul Gems. And when you play a card that gives you Soul Gem, you simply take that card, play it, and get its effect that turn. So Soul Gem is kind of like a random resource. Let's take a look at some of them. Here's the Wolf Shaman. Gain one money and then draw a card. Uh, here's just a draw three cards. Gain one money or gain one fighting. Gain a money, you can banish a card in your hand or discard pile. Draw a card. Now you might, if you played Ascension before, you might think at this point in time that the artwork here looks familiar. That's because all the artwork, as far as I can tell, on these Soul Gem cards comes from cards already in the game and does the same thing. But these are temporary. Think of them like a spirit that show up. Here's the Great Omen Raven. Name a card, show the top card, put it in your hand. If it's the card you named, you get three points. And so there's lots of these cards that are in the game, but you're never sure what's going to come up when you use one of these Soul Gems. But since there's a lot of cards that utilize Soul Gems, you're going to see a lot of them in play over the course of a game. All right, what do I like about Ascension? Well, first of all, I really like the uh, or about Immortal Heroes, I really like the Soul Gems. They add a lot. I can't wait till they're added to the iOS version uh, because that's most, mostly how I play Ascension these days. But I, I think the the way that the, they add some randomness to the game, but you don't have to pick them. You can do basically uh, whatever you want. This works decently by itself, but it's really an expansion. I did play with just this by itself, and it was fun. It really puts a heavy emphasis on Soul Gems when you play it by itself. When you mix it with just uh, the, I, make sure I get the name right. When you mix it with just Storm of the Souls, it also is a uh, great uh, emphasis on the Soul Gems and also a great emphasis on events. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's some dilution and even more when you mix it with the other stuff. Fun though, some neat cards like I showed you. This isn't going to blow your mind in how different it is, but it does add an element to the game that I like quite a bit. You know, it seems like each review of each expansion of Ascension, I get more and more positive on the system. I wasn't such a big fan of it at the beginning, you remember? I thought it was very tactical and not very strategic, and I still think that's the case, although I'm getting better, and I think the more cards they add, the more different variants and more different things you can do. Like, for example, this one I said that going for lifebound heroes now, I think, is a really viable thing, and I enjoy that about this. So, yeah, I still hate the artwork, pretty much every single card, but the game itself is a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.